it's Katrina! From shackled skeletons to a miraculously recovered treasure hoard, here are 10 of the most amazing and shocking archaeological discoveries. Number 10. The Child and the Bird A pair of finger bones that once belonged to a Neanderthal child were recently found inside a cave in Poland. While this is somewhat interesting, what's actually truly shocking is that the finger bones had been digested by a large bird about 115,000 years ago. The bones were not very well preserved. They were riddled with tiny holes, and this is because they definitely ran through the digestive system of a giant bird. The question is, did Neanderthals actually have to worry about their children being dragged off by a giant bird? Or did a bird maybe just happen to bite the child's hand, leaving them without fingers? The researchers believe that the small child was probably attacked and then eaten by a giant prehistoric bird monster. Of course, the child could have already been deceased when it was eaten, but it also could have been alive. Scientists have been unable to extract DNA from the bones because of their poor preservation but they still feel confident that they belong to a Neanderthal because of where the bones were found. They were discovered in the deepest part of the cave, where researchers also discovered Neanderthal stone tools. It's believed now that the Neanderthals probably lived inside of the cave or at least used it seasonally. These were literally cavemen. But as for the giant bird that was apparently eating their children, it could have been a type of terror bird that lived 100,000 years ago and had been at the top of the food chain ever since the dinosaurs were wiped out. These birds were giant, making a modern emu look like a chicken. What's the biggest bird you've ever encountered? Have you ever had a scary encounter with a bird? Let me know in the comments below. I was attacked by a rooster once and it was pretty scary. It came chasing after me like a demon trying to swipe my legs with its talons. Number 9. The Great Dismal Swamp The Great Dismal Swamp is located in southeastern Virginia, and it's a small portion of what was once a sprawling wetland that stretched across at least 1 million acres of coastal plains. There are only about 120,000 acres left of the Great Dismal Swamp, and nowadays it's used as a wildlife refuge. It's one of the last remaining intact wild areas on the Atlantic coast. But here's the thing. It has a long history going back from the Native Americans all the way to the Civil War. Recent archaeological discoveries have been shedding light on what the Great Dismal Swamp was used for during the days of slavery. Many runaway slaves arrived in the Great Dismal Swamp, where some Native American people were still living in the 17th century. Because the runaway slaves would often arrive with nothing but the clothes on their back, they learned how to hunt and fish and live off the land. Imagine having to survive in the swamp. I don't think I could make it. The mosquitoes alone must have been horrible. Plus, trying to light a fire in the damp? Yikes. Some of the most recent excavations from the Great Dismal Swamp have revealed stone tools, fragments of glass, pieces of flint, and other evidence pointing to the people living in the Great Dismal Swamp during the 1800s as basically living in an isolated Stone Age culture. What's really fascinating is that the people who lived in the swamp have been completely ignored by history. Their lives were never really recorded in great detail, and because the swamp lands are so hard to excavate, it's almost impossible to discover much about their lives. All archaeological evidence has been in the form of rock tools and bits of stone, but hopefully, archaeologists will keep at it and uncover even more evidence of how these people were able to survive against all odds. Number 8. Floating Mummies a couple of mummies were recently pulled out of some sewage water near El Minya in Egypt. According to what the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities said, two previously undiscovered mummies from the Greco-Roman era were located 150 miles south of Cairo in a small village. Police were alerted to sarcophagi floating through polluted sewage water. The wooden sarcophagi were damaged so effectively by the disgusting water that they have mostly disintegrated. The authorities were able to save the mummies, but they are in pretty rough shape. It looks like the mummies had been buried sometime between 322 and 395 BC. They had been slumbering in peace until an illegal excavation uncovered them. At least that's what experts are thinking. It's believed that grave robbers broke into the tomb, stole a bunch of goods, then dumped the sarcophagi so they wouldn't get caught. They likely dumped the mummies into the local irrigation canal, where they floated off down a river of sewage. All we know about the mummies right now is that they had portraits drawn on the tops of their sarcophagus depicting women. These are known as Fayum portraits, which often depicted the face of whoever was buried inside. However, the mummies have yet to be identified. Number 7. Gloucester Prison 
While excavating Gloucester Prison in the United Kingdom, archaeologists came upon some very shocking discoveries. Gloucester Prison has a history dating back to the Roman occupation of Britain. There was once a castle built on the site of the prison, complete with a keep, inner bailey, and stables. There were defensive walls and ditches, a drawbridge, and even a gatehouse. However, the castle fell into disrepair in the medieval period and was eventually repurposed as a county jail under Richard III. It was famous for its terrible conditions and epidemics of jail fever. A new one was built and from the 1790s until the 1960s, the place was continuously used as a county jail. I bet there are many stories to tell about all that happened in this place. Now archaeologists are working to uncover the remains of the jail and the medieval castle below. So far, at least 900 artifacts have been found dating back through the centuries. Most of the finds consisted of medieval pottery, bones, and other miscellaneous objects. One of the team's favorites are medieval bone dice marked with circles and dots. It's a rare opportunity to stand on the wall of a 12th century Norman castle while also standing on 1920s prison cells. Today, the castle keep location is going to be restored and put on display as part of a new project. Number 6. Megalithic Cemetery Archaeologists have found a very unique megalithic cemetery in Poland. This cemetery has been dated to about 5,500 years old. It contains dozens of shocking tombs and was first noticed by researchers looking at satellite images of a field. After realizing the field looked like it contained historical treasures, they went out to excavate. They revealed one of the largest megalithic cemeteries in Poland. The cemetery had reinforced walls made of wood with special entrances leading into tombs. They even found the remains of an old defensive structure around some of the tombs that may have been used as a temporary military camp during the 9th century BC. Unfortunately, as is the case with many prehistoric sites throughout Europe, almost all of the grave goods are gone. It was common for the grave goods and even the deceased to be removed during that time period as part of a ritual behavior that we don't quite understand. In more recent years, it's likely that looters have taken the rest. But this discovery is just one site among many others that have been popping up in Poland, revealing its rich history and ancient past. Number 5. Recovered Treasure Considered the 11th century's best collection of jewelry, the Amargilla treasure is a vast collection of precious jewelry that contains at least 623 pieces of ancient jewels, including gold and silver, chains and necklaces, golden wrist bracelets, and even golden pendants. There were also rock crystal beads and pink coral beads found, along with glass stones and river pearls. The Amarguilla treasure is one of the most impressive treasures ever unearthed in Spain, but it wasn't by archaeologists. The treasure was actually found by the Spanish National Police, who had been working on a criminal investigation for black market goods. An archaeologist from Córdoba had discovered pictures online of jewelry that looked a little bit suspicious. The archaeologists contacted the police, and they launched the investigation tracing the photographs to its original source. They found the man who took them to the site where he said he had found the hoard, but while well, nobody really believed him, the good news is that most of the treasure was now in safe hands. It looks as though the treasure was buried in the 11th century in Córdoba, the Andalusian region of Spain, when civil war broke out. The person who buried it most likely expected to return but the true story of what happened to its owners remains a mystery. At least 16 jewelry hoards have been excavated in the last 30 years in Andalucía, with many of the items currently being displayed at local museums. The good news is that the items were found just as their owners left them, and even though they will never get them back, they can take comfort in knowing that now so many people appreciate them. What would you do if you found a treasure like this? Let me know in the comments below! And now for number four, but first want to give a big shout out to Dominique Gonzalez and Bartolo. Hi guys, thanks so much for watching, and if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us. Number four, sacrificed llamas. Archaeologists working in Peru have discovered the shocking remains of naturally mummified llamas that had apparently been sacrificed to Incan gods 500 years ago. The mummified llamas were discovered wrapped in colorful cloth, painted in red, and adorned with feathers. This is the way the Inca decorated the llamas before sending them to their doom. The Inca buried the llamas alive as offerings to their gods. While this may seem morbid, sacrifice was a critical part of the ancient world, but this particular find is so rare that nothing like it has been found before. The mummies were discovered by Lidio Valdez and his team of researchers from the Department of Anthropology and Archaeology at the University of Calgary. 
They found the llama mummies hidden underneath clay floors inside of buildings at the Inca site of Tambo Viejo. Unfortunately, looters had disturbed the original graves, but they didn't take the dead llamas with them. The llamas were buried facing east in the direction of the sunrise, which would have been in honor of the sun deity. The llamas were sacrificed to the gods to help the Inca have a successful harvest, to be victorious in battle, and maybe even as an excuse to have a giant communal feast. Unlike other sacrifices found throughout South America, these animals showed no signs of being cut before death. They were almost certainly buried alive, which researchers say could suggest that many of the human sacrifices done by the Inca also included people being buried alive. Number 3. A Pile of Gold In a remote and mountainous region of Kazakhstan, archaeologists recently stumbled upon a shocking treasure of royal gold jewelry inside of a burial mound. The burial mound contained at least 3,000 items, all dating back nearly 3,000 years. Researchers believe the tomb belonged to a royal member of the ancient Saka people. These were an ancient nomadic people who lived throughout several regions of Siberia and Central Asia. The treasure was full of earrings, gold plates, necklaces embedded with precious stones, and all of it was made with incredible attention to detail. What's really amazing is that some of the jewelry had been made using micro-soldering techniques that were quite advanced for that time. Last I heard, the graves had yet to be opened to reveal the bodies inside, but archaeologists are slowly working their way down. They believe that they will find the remains of a royal couple, maybe even an unknown king and queen. This is one of the only Saka burial mounds discovered, making it a very rare find. Even rarer is the fact that the burial mound had not been looted, as almost everything in the area discovered by archaeologists in recent years has already been pillaged by grave robbers. Number 2. Shackled Skeletons Inside of an ancient Roman necropolis in France, an archaeological team unearthed the remains of adults and children still bound in iron shackles around either their wrists, ankles, or necks. Since the discovery, archaeologists have been working overtime to unravel the secrets of these chained prisoners. The excavation was done near the amphitheater of Saints, which happened to be the regional capital during the time when Rome ruled over France. The city is actually famous for its Roman-style Colosseum, which was once able to hold 18,000 people. The graves discovered here date back to the 1st and 2nd centuries AD. Some graves contain more than one body, often with the dead positioned head to toe in small rectangular pits. One specific grave was found with at least five people inside of it. There were absolutely no grave goods found except for in one burial plot belonging to a child who had been buried with seven vases and two coins over their eyes. This seemed to be the only person given any kind of respect in death. As for those buried in iron shackles, it's not exactly clear who these people may have been. Some believe maybe they were gladiators working in the local Colosseum. Some say they were slaves, and others believe they could have been criminals. Nobody knows anything for sure just yet, especially not why they'd been given such brutal and shocking burials. Number 1. The Ballista Skeleton In Dorset, United Kingdom, there once stood the largest hill fort in all of Europe, Maiden Castle. The castle was constructed in the Iron Age and occupied by a tribe named the Duro Triges. The farmers and villagers from this tribe worked the land outside the ramparts and were able to flee into the great defensive walls of the fortress if an attack were ever to come their way. When Rome invaded in 43 AD, Roman soldiers fought their way through Dorset with the intention of capturing Maiden Castle. The Roman army was far superior to the farming Duro Triges who fought back using nothing but slings and stones. The Romans were too strong and the farmers were massacred in huge numbers. They were then buried in mass graves. These graves were excavated at Maiden Hill in the 1930s by a renowned geologist named Mortimer Wheeler. The most shocking discovery during the excavations was a skeleton found with a Roman ballista bolt still lodged inside of his spine. As if the Roman attackers didn't believe this man was dead with a ballista bolt stuck through his body, they then smashed his skull with an axe. His skeleton sat in pretty rough shape for nearly 2,000 years. The bolt forever stuck in his spine. Thanks for watching! Which of these discoveries shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another video. See you later! Bye!